The other issue that you mentioned that I thought was interesting was the whole concept of leadership and the difficulty in terms of self-determination theory research, especially mm -hmm. being accepted by right. leadership and say, and more school and school district leaders saying, oh, this makes sense. We've never thought of organizing schools through this lens. Mm -hmm. And it makes so much sense to do that. Why hasn't that been able to happen? Becomes one critical question for right. uh, self-determination theory experts like Rich Ryan and John Marshall and all those guys and ladies out there who are focusing on it. You know, how do we do this? How do we get this into how do we change the mindsets of mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. of the policy makers to see the importance of this in terms of student growth and development right right and the other thing that you mentioned which i thought was really interesting in terms of the dynamics of of control mm -hmm. and i know ryan and dc talked a great deal about this in terms of high stakes testing right. and other financial controls, class size, scheduling, all of that stuff. Mm -hmm. how, how controlling that is and how it limits the creativity and the, the meeting of psychological needs of kids. Right. This is the Agentic Schools Vodcast where you will learn about schools from around the world where children's agency to make decisions about their learning and living is more important than their academic skills. What makes education possible is the satisfaction of psychological needs. So that is what these schools have in common with all others. What makes a school agentic is satisfying those needs particularly well. I'm your host, Don Burr.